Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about recursion and nesting. And we're going to have a lot of examples like this when we're creating our own classes and upcoming lectures. Uh, but I'm going to start with something a little bit more simple, which is a nested list. Um, a list might contain other lists, which might contain other lists, which finally contains some values. And, and so I'm going to look at kind of two recursive functions for that. Um, and, and so, well, first off, oops, that's a preview of what I'm going to look at next. So, so looking at this call to has, right? I have a has function here. It takes a list and then it returns whether that X is somewhere in the nested structure, right? And so, so here I see I have this nested list and I want to see if eight is anywhere in there. And indeed it is. Now, if I used an operator like, um, like let's say something like this, if I said uh, eight in list where, where that list is basically this stuff, that that would be false actually and, and the reason the reason is that list only contains three things it contains a list actually it contains two things it contains this list and it contains this list and neither of those things is eight right so so the n operator is not recursive right it can't figure out that it uh eight is kind of buried somewhere in here um and that's the purpose of this has this has um function All right so let me kind of clear that out so this list we're dealing with, um, if you were to put it in Python Tutor, it would look something like this. Like L refers to this list with two entries. Um, one is a list with the numbers one, two, three. The other one is a list that contains both a list and nine. Okay. And, and so let's just kind of trace through what the function does. Um, I'm going to loop over everything in the list and if the thing I'm looping for over is exactly what I want, then problem solved. I know that it's true and I'm done. Otherwise, let's say it's not what I want, but the thing I'm looping over happens to be a list, right? So is instance item list, looping over it, well, it must be a list. Well then, then what? Then I'm gonna do my recursive call and say, okay, well maybe I don't directly contain it, but you know, I contain a list and, and maybe that list contains it. And, and so I kind of loop over all the items and I do both these checks, trying to either the direct check or the recursive check. And, and when I get all done, well, I return false, right? If I've kind of looped over everything and can't find it, well, then I must not have it. So I'll return false. Okay. So let me think a little bit about this. Like, let's say I'm looping over two items, right? Um, if either of the, those items is what I want, uh, I'm going to return true, right? So we can really kind of think of this loop as a big or. Does item one have it, or does item two have it, or does item three have it, or does item four have it? And, and so that's kind of how I may write this out when I'm tracing through this. I may be writing ors. So so let's actually take um, take an attempt at this, and I may write some code on the right. And and so what I want to do first is I want to figure out well what do I get when I say has, and then I'm passing in the list I want to search. And the list contains the list of one, two, three. And it also contains a list that contains a list seven, eight, and then the integer nine. And, um, and that was part of that list. And that was part of that list, right? So I kind of have these three levels and I'm searching for eight, right? What does that give me? Well, it's going to give me, well, you know, does this list have it or does this list have it, right? Because each, each case I'm kind of looping over here and I'm checking, well, does, does the first list have it or does the second list have it? So, so the way I'd really write this out is I'd say has my item one was that first list, one, two, three. Does that list have nine? If, if it does, right, if... If this does, then this whole thing is true. Or there's another possibility, and that possibility is that maybe this other list has nine. So I'm going to write that out. Or as the other list is like this, it contains the list seven, eight, and nine. Does that contain eight? And, and you know, I already say I have a, a kind of a, let me just fix this here, right? I'm searching for eight, right? Whenever I 
um, whenever I make my recursive call from has to has, I, I'm searching for that same item. So, so my apologies, these are both eight, like so. And, and so that's my first problem. And do I know the answer yet? Uh, no, I do not because, how do I make a note there? Um, because I need to run both this function and this function first to try to figure out um, what the answer is, right? So, so that's kind of a hanging problem. So, so let me take a, an attempt at this one. Let me write that down. Um, that is like this. It's well, as then one, two, three. Are any of those eight? And, and so as I'm looping over here, right? I'm going to loop over. You know, item equals one, item equals two, item equals three. In each case, none of them are eight, so this will never be true. And also, well, none of them is none of the items is the list, right? They're all integers. So when I run this, I can already see all the answers going to be false, right? So this, this is going to be false. Okay, that was one of my sum problems, right? So that was this up here, but I also had this piece. So I'm going to put that down here as well. And that is, what do I get when I have has? And then, then my list is containing the list seven, eight, and the value nine. And I'm searching for eight. What is that? Well, I guess there's two possibilities, right? Um, well, as I'm kind of looping over here, I'm going to check, well, does this list contain eight? Or is this value equal to eight? So let me write that out. I'm going to write that as, that is has seven, eight. Does that contain eight? Or, I'm going to make my recursive call, which is has. Actually, no, there's not a recursive call there. I'm sorry. Um, or, or does 9 equal 8? So maybe I'll just write that out. Or 9 equal to equal to 8, which is, of course, false, right? So for this or to give me true, I mean, this thing has to be true. So this is really the last problem we have. And, um, and so I'll just write that out. I'll say, does I have the has here? Do I have seven, eight? Does that have eight? And, and so now when I'm running this, this is my list. I'm gonna loop over it, you know, item equals seven, item equals eight. And when I'm on items equals eight, well, X is eight. So eight equals eight, I'm gonna return true. And, and so for this, I am going to get true, right? So what does that mean? That means I can work my way back to this, right? I know the answer to this. So false or true gives me true. Okay, so now I have this piece, which feeds back into what? Well, well let me kind of just... Back in my original problem, right? I, I have this recursive call and this recursive call and I'm oring them. And so I know that this piece, that, that turned out to be false, right? So I had false or this thing and that thing turned out to be true, I just saw. Right, you see that? This true goes up to here. So I have false or true, which is of course true, right? So I could kind of work my way back and, and that's my final answer, right? It's true that this list, this time nested list somewhere contains the value eight. Okay. So I can kind of deal with these recursive structures like this and um, and kind of search through them. And we're going to be doing that with more complicated structures that we create ourselves. Okay. That was an example where it's kind of mathematical, right? I'm just returning something. Uh, let me do an example where uh, I'm taking actions. Instead of returning, I'm actually printing something and I want to see what the result is. And, and so I have a slightly different list here, but still nested. And I want to dump it out. I want to dump out all the numbers, one, two, three, seven, eight. 
And what I want to do is I want to put some spaces, almost like tabs, in front of the numbers that will indicate how many levels of nesting are there. So for example, three is directly in the list, right? So, so three shouldn't be indented at all. One and two have one level of indenting. Seven has one level of indenting. Eight has two levels of indenting. And, um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of dump out these recursive structures and then maybe calling myself. And as I'm going deeper and deeper into the structures, I wanna increase that indenting. Right, so so let's just start it, and we'll we'll kind of look at the more code more as we go. Um, so since this is one of those ones where we are taking actions, it's maybe one of those ones where we get a timeline um, on the right. Okay, so so what happens here? So I have dump, I have dump, and then I have a list which has one, two, three, seven. Eight. Um, and then I think I need one more bracket. So that was that was my list, right? That was my L. And then and then I had zero here, right? So I'm just gonna say zero was my level of indent. Okay. So so as I'm I'm reading through this, right, I'm looping over all the items in my list. And I guess there's three items. There's this list this integer, and then this list. And so the first one, you know, each of them I'm checking if it's a list. The first one I'm gonna do a recursive call. The second one is not a list, so I'll do my print. And then the third one is a list, so I'll do my recursive call. So I'm really kind of making two recursive calls in one print. So, so what happens here? The first recursive call is like this. I'm gonna say dump dump of my first list, which is one and two. And my indent level is, uh, so I'm calling myself, right? I'm kind of doing that, that item is that first list and I say indent plus one, right? So my indent level was zero. So when I call myself, I increase that to one. My indent level is one. Okay. Right, so, so item was the first list. Now item is three, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna multiply this string by my indent level, which is zero. So, so I guess this is nothing, right? Multiplying a string by zero gives me nothing. And then the string of that item, which is, well, items three, right? So this is gonna give me, right? The next thing it gives me is print, print, three. Okay, and then the last thing it's going to do, right, is for this list, oops, excuse me, uh, for this list, right, this will now be item, uh, and, and so this thing is a, you know, the item is a list, and so I'm going to do another recursive call there, and, and maybe I'll just kind of draw that down here where I have room. So now I'm calling dump of the list seven, and then another list that just contains eight and one. Okay, so I figured out one print so far, but both of these recursive calls might also be doing some prints. Okay, so let, let's do this one first. Um, now I'm looping over this thing. So item will be one and then item will be two. And so this isn't true in either case. In both cases, I'm just trying to print this down here, right? So I'm gonna run this for item is one and then item is two. And in both cases, the indent level is one. So I, I may be printing off one underscore between each of these, right? So, so let me just try to write this out. What am I gonna print? I'm gonna print underscore one and I'm going to print underscore two. Okay, right, so kind of the more underscores I print in something, what that indicates is it's deeper in the nested structure, right? So, so three is directly in the top list. One and two are in a list inside of a list, and that's why they have one underscore in front of them. Okay, so that's good. So, so now let's figure out what happens down for this dump, right? I'm kind of 
building out my tree one piece at a time, my, or my call graph, I'm building it out. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna loop over seven, and I'm gonna loop over this list that contains eight. So, so when seven is item, I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna print one underscore before seven, right? So, so this, this thing, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna print, I'm gonna print one underscore and then seven. Okay, that was, so, so item, item was seven. And now item is gonna be this list that contains eight. Okay, so since item is a list, this is true. And I'm gonna recursively call myself, I'm gonna dump a list that contains eight with indent equal to two, right? Because my, it was one for me, when I call myself, I add one, right? So this list eight is gonna go to here and adding one here, I'm gonna get two here, right? So, so let me just try to write this out. So this is gonna call dump, dump my list containing eight. You can see each time I recursively call myself, I kind of have a simpler endpoint, right? It was kind of awful at the beginning, but I keep breaking it down into smaller and smaller pieces. Right, so I have this, and then I have two. And well, what does this piece of code do? Well, I'm gonna loop over this list. So um, I loop once, right? So item is eight. Um, the integer is not a list, so I'm just gonna print this. I'm gonna print two, two underscores. So two underscores and then eight. Right, so what do I get here? This is gonna print This is going to print underscore, underscore, eight. Whew, okay. Let's try to put this all together. What, so I've kind of figured out all the prints I'm going to do. And, and now that I've figured that out, I can figure out, well, what is the order in which things are printed? Right, I'm ultimately going to print everything in my list, like one, two, three, seven, eight but it's gonna put the number of underscores in front to indicate how many levels of nesting I have. Right, so I'm gonna say um, output over here. Output, so these are all my prints. So what happens first is I have, um, if I, I have underscore one, and then I have this, which is underscore two, then I have three, let me, it kind of looks like my almost like a minus. Let me put it down properly. So that was an underscore two, and I have three, and then down here I have um, you know, I have underscore seven, and um, and then finally down here I have underscore underscore eight. So underscore underscore eight, and so I can trace through and figure out what happens uh, for this function. A little bit more complicated than the last one. So we're gonna be doing lots of things like this upcoming when we learn about graphs and, and graphs are kind of very common in the real world. So even though this feels like maybe a bit of a contrived example, being able to reason through this is kind of a stepping stone towards what um, we're gonna be doing and kind of upcoming in the class.